welcome to the Teeny Tinkers channel. I make ball jointed doll and craft related content. You ever hear about facing your fear? Basically just finding something you're afraid of and facing it head on to get over the fear. What if it wasn't a fear and instead it was an incompetency? And yes, I am referring to this as an incompetency on my part. Many of you know that I struggle to make wigs. I'm not good at it. I have never been good at it. And I have always wanted to be able to make wigs because I think it would be a really fun part of customizing a doll. Now, now, keep in mind, I do customize wigs, but they just historically haven't been great. Like this one, for example. But that's all about to change. I got a wig making tutor, and I know that probably sounds really silly, and it is. I know it is. But my friend Pablo, hopeful creation over on Instagram, has been making the majority of my wigs forever. He makes pretty much all of my pre-order wigs. Um, he makes wigs for me for like Christmas and stuff. And now he's made me a personal tutorial on how to make wigs. I have a feeling it's so that he can watch me mess up. <laughs> I'm just kidding, he wouldn't do that. But regardless, I am so excited to give it another go. I'm going to do my best to not deviate from his instruction because I tend to go my own way when given written instructions. But I really want to do these wigs justice, or this wig justice, we'll see how many I get through. But you're here to come along with me as I attempt to make a wig as taught by a wig making professional. Um, also, if you haven't checked out Hopeful Creations, I definitely recommend it uh, if you, for all your wig making needs. Um, but without any further ado, let's get into the video. Let's go. Hi, Rosie. So I've seen that you've tried to make wigs a couple of times and, you know, um, they end up looking, let's say, great. However, I've been trying to teach you how to make wigs for a really long time, for a couple of years. You know that we know each other when I tried my best to teach you how to make wigs and you were kind of rude to me. Um, okay, so uh, one time when we had just started chatting, like, oh my god, what was it, three years ago, Pablo? Um, he, I was out on a date night, like he, like he had any idea. And um, he had, I had said something like two hours ago about like, gosh, I wish I could make wigs. I don't remember what it was, something like that. And um, he started sending me like really thoughtful, helpful advice on making wigs, but he was sending them as single messages. So my notifications were blowing up and I was just like annoyed, but it was my own fault for not turning off the notifications. But I was just like, uh, I'm on a date. Like, this is enough. You're blowing up my phone. But like, oh my gosh, it, it came across so cranky. It wasn't intended as cranky, but it's, it is funny. <laughs> uh, it's funny now. It would be a fun experience um, to see how well you do. So I'm going to try to start from the beginning and I just want you to please at least try your best to do what I do once and then you can try to make it however you want. Called out, he, uh, that is exactly what I just said. I will, as long as I have quasi the materials on hand, um, which I think I should. I will follow these to the best of my ability. You have to have patience, which is something that I don't think you have when it comes to wigs. <laughs> so I'm going to go into everything that you need uh, and then we can start. So helpful. So the first thing that you will need is your fiber. In this case, I'm going to use viscose. I love viscose. Um, I was gonna get viscose and then um, the Etsy sellers I went to wanted like a hundred dollars for shipping. A hundred dollars to ship fiber. So um, I got this. I ordered like some acrylic roving and it came and it is coarser than I thought. But I got like, they're huge first of all. Like, oh this is the same color as my hair. <gasps> I guess I'm making a mini me wig because this is the, I could make myself a wig out of this. Oh my God. I don't know how I would make dark roots. We're not gonna talk about that. But um, I do want to try and give this a straight and quick 
at least a piece of it to see if it becomes less like floof. I have had this straightener since I was 15 years old. They really don't make them like this anymore. I'm just setting it to 370. I don't wanna set it too hot right away because if I do that, then it's going to burn. Let's see what else we need. You would also need uh, some sort of plastic bag. That Can I use cling wrap? Like a thin one. In Canada, we've banned single use plastics. So like getting plastic bags from the grocery store doesn't work. Um, so I can't do that. Um, also need elastics to kind of be able to create the shape on the circle. You would also need uh, like a thin fabric. Uh, the one I actually use for my wigs is this kind of one that it's kind of like the ones used for stockings. Please use a thin one because I see you making a lot of folds when you make the wig caps and I think that's one of the the things why your wigs don't turn out looking the best. And I'm not being shady, you know? Um, I'm just speaking my truth. <laughs> However, I like to use wood glue. Uh, oh my God. One of the things that makes me really impatient is waiting for the wig, like the wig glue to dry. Wood glue. I, don't know, I have to go ask my husband for wood glue. So she's back and uh, I have wood glue. This is the one I've got. It's uh, Gorilla Glue, so it's not the same one Pablo is showing me. This is Junie V1, V2 maybe, with the bad knees. She will make a lovely wig model. I also use things to you. I have a couple of busts um, for wig making. The irony that I didn't print any out for myself for this video. You're also going to need uh, one or two different uh, brushes. Um, but I do have this one. And then I have this like fluffy brush. I'm sure this is wrong, but um, that's what I have on hand. You're going to need different types of uh, brushes, combs, whatever you want to call it, depending on when you want to comb or how you want it to look like. You're of course going to need scissors to cut the fiber all right so um that's it for materials i'm not going to show the entire wig making process um as far as pablo's video this is meant for me but um i will show you me as i bumble along to it so um i guess cue the voiceover starts here hi there welcome to the voiceover so of course my immediate thought was to deviate from the plan I had no idea what I was doing with this material and I thought I should make wefts out of hot glue. Big, Big stick. Huge. Typically wefts are made out of a regular glue. I figured I would do this with hot glue to save time, but little did I know that this material does not want to be made with wefts the same way that when I brush out yarn that works. You need to grab the end of the yarn and pull because the hairs are not the same length as the whole strand of yarn. This yarn and viscose are made up of individual strands that are between four and six inches long on average. So if you cut them, you're going to get a bunch of half pieces and you're going to lose so much hair in your weft. As well, the part you add the glue to is not necessarily even going to be enough to make a weft. I learned this the hard way when I tried brushing them out though. This ended up costing me way more time in the long run and I wish I had just done it Pablo's way from the get-go, which is to do it weftless. It would have saved me a bunch of time straightening and brushing as well as gluing. At least all of the hair was salvageable and I was able to use it for this project. In the end, it was my first try and I ended up with a bunch of tiny short half wefts with hot glue at the base, and then a bunch of brushed out yarn, which is really what I should have been using in the first place. Pablo recommends using a plastic bag for this. However, I didn't have one on hand, so I used cling wrap, which worked just as well. This part always looks like a horror movie to me. I'm sorry, Junie. I always, always, always double layer the cling wrap. 
This comes from when I would do hot glue wigs because sometimes the hot glue can burn through the plastic or melt it a bit and you really don't want to get it all over your doll's head. This is good practice for using any glue though because in reality when the wig gets glued to the doll's head it can be a bit of a pain to get off, especially once it's dry. Using a really thin fabric, yes thin, I tried to get it as close to Junie's head as physically possible. So far all of this is tracking with how I typically make my wigs. The exception though is that this stage is where I would stop and start putting the hot glue on to make the wig cap. However, one thing I'm noticing is that by laying the elastics over the ears, as Pablo mentions to me, I'm able to get a much tighter fit with much less wrinkles. This probably has something to do with not using a super thick fabric as well, so that's fair, Pablo. But now I'm ready for glue. Now, using wood glue for a wig is something I'm completely new to, and I was a bit nervous because it was not the same brand Pablo was using. I pretty much use Gorilla Glue for everything around the house, and realistically, it was totally fine, but there was this big gob of dry glue, which was left there from my husband from our last project. Now, it's just glue and it's not gross, but the feeling of it really grossed me out, so I had to pull out chunks of glue from the cap and then from inside the bottle, and it like kind of looked like a scoby. If you've ever made kombucha, you know. All jokes aside, it wasn't bad at all. It brushed on like a thick school glue, a little thicker than Elmer's. But one thing I'm going to say about this glue is that it really does soak into the fabric in a way that I didn't really notice the Aileen's glue do and the way that the hot glue definitely doesn't do. This saturates the entire wig fabric and makes for a more consistent base to make wigs on. It also made it way easier to smooth out wrinkles and not cause any more wrinkles than using the hot glue. At this point, I had a decent layer on, but I thought I should make it a little bit thicker based on what Pablo said in the video. And then I got the news I'd been dreading since starting this project. You would just leave this uh, for a whole day to dry. Um, something that I think you don't do, actually. Um. And there it was, the stab right to my heart. The wig cap looked great so far, so I just set Juni aside and put her on top of the diorama to dry. I definitely understand why Pablo makes multiple wig caps at the same time, because if I had to make a wig cap and wait 24 hours every single time, I would lose my mind with impatience. 24 hours was going to be a long time, and I was already on a roll, so I gave in to my whims. I thought it might be fun to show you the difference between the kind of wigs I typically make and one made following Pablo's instructions. Especially since I had all of these not so great shorty wefts, I thought this would be a good opportunity to make a hot glue wig with hot glue wefts to show you how that turns out when I make it. And then compare it later to the wigs that Pablo instructs me to make. Keep in mind, I've made about 20 hot glue wigs at this point. And this is my very first time trying it following Pablo's method. So there is going to be some discrepancy there, but I'm curious to see how she turns out. With the wefts already made, this wig only took about 25 or 30 minutes to make in total. Making the wefts is of course one of the most time intensive processes, especially with the straightening and the brushing you have to do. But then again, with the yarn I used this time, not having to brush out regular yarn, was a lifesaver. I actually think a lot of why my wigs have previously looked scraggly is my just never being able to get the wefts quite brushed out correctly. In order to not spoil the comparison at the end, I'm going to stop showing the process here. Instead, while the wig cap dries and while I get ready for tomorrow, let's take a minute to do doll of the week. All right, so this week's doll of the week should come as no surprise, but it comes from Hopeful Creation on Instagram. Hopeful Creation has a hollow already, as well as a handful of teeny tinies. But he also hopped on the Celestial Squad pre-order and scored himself a super cute Luna. They have a super cute face up from Ferrer's Place over on Instagram if you're interested. I always love the way Pablo styles my dolls. I think that they always look so cute. If you want to be featured for Doll of the Week, don't forget to share your photos of my sculpts using hashtag Teeny Tinkers or hashtag Teeny Tinkers Dolls. 
But with that, it's been a day. So let's get back to making that wig. I actually think it might be dry enough after 12 to 18 hours, but I totally get waiting 24 hours is completely fine. Now it's time to trim the wig cap. When I make hot glue wig caps, they tend to eat the elastics I put around the doll, which is kind of a pain in the butt because since they're stretched on the doll, they stay stretched in the hot glue and can end up messing up your wig cap if you're not careful. However, with this one, I was able to snip them right out. They didn't sit under the glue so much as kind of on top of it, and it didn't pull any of the glue when I removed them. I was really happy about that. I'm pretty happy with the fit too. Another downside of hot glue wigs is the wig caps do tend to warp and they can end up bigger than the doll you made them on. So already I have to say this wig cap is 10 out of 10. And now I get to add the hair. Using the hair strands that I brushed out from the day before, I honestly grab them and give them another brush and an extra straighten in most cases. I noticed that I hadn't quite straightened them as smooth as they could be and they were still a bit fluffier than needed. This yarn is kind of coarse and I think it would actually make for really great locked styles or natural hairstyles if you knew what to do with it. For me though, I was having a hard time with just the straightened locks. Quickly realizing I was putting too much hair on at once and I wasn't able to get things to stick properly. I forgot to wash my paintbrush the day before so my paintbrush is out of commission and I'm using a silicone sculpting tool. This worked okay to be honest, but if I'm going to do this on the regular, I think I would get a small silicone spatula instead. I think this would work even better than the paintbrush for myself anyways. There is a definite learning curve to applying the hair though. Especially towards the beginning, I was really struggling with the hairs coming up in my hands. The problem I'm running into is as I'm putting the glue on the cap and laying the hair on top, when I try to press the hair down to stick it to the glue I've put on the cap, I don't want it to glue all the way down or get stuck in previous layers because then the hair won't move or be brushable. So I'm running into the issue where I'm having a hard time pressing it down just enough to stick it so that when I put the glue on top to hold it down, it doesn't just pull all the hair off, which is what you're seeing happening here. By the end, I was getting better, but this is definitely a practice makes progress moment. Also, while it's not saving time now because I'm struggle bussing, in the future when I'm good at this, it probably would save time. So I work my way up the head in layers until I get to the crown. Also, in hindsight, I think I would do one less layer or do thinner layers since the wig ended up quite thick. Personally, I prefer doll wigs to be on the thinner side, which more resembles people's hair. I definitely overcompensated on the amount of hair I put on because I was so worried that once it dried and I brushed it out, all of this hair would fall off and the doll would be almost bald. I did not have enough trust in the process, or rather my ability to execute this process on the first go, so I was really worried that she was going to end up with super thin hair. Everything held up really good though, so I'm not sure what I was so concerned about. When it came time to do the parting, I was honestly really stressed out about this again. I've never done a weftless parting. Typically, I thought having the weft is what made the part look straight, but Pablo showed me that you don't necessarily need the weft. The pros of the weft is it makes it easier to lay down and easier to flip over. It also ensures that your line is straight. The cons are, of course, that the weft tends to make it thicker at the base, so it's harder to get it to lay flat if that's what you want it to look like. You're also more likely to see the weft through the root, especially being so close to the top of the head. So at this point, the gluing is technically done and I'm feeling stressed. I can see a lot of the glue through the base, especially near the top. And while logically I know that that will dry and look like nothing, it looks not great right now. I also wasn't able to get the parting quite as straight as I wanted. I don't know, maybe in the future I would make one weft with the actual wood glue and not with hot glue and do sort of a combo hybrid of Pablo and I's methods. As mentioned, surprisingly little hair came out while I was brushing, though I did make sure to wait two hours before I even tried to brush the wig. But before we see how mine turned out, let's see how Pablo's looks. This is how it looks like. I think it looks really, really good. And once it's in the doll, it's going to look even better. 
So I'm going to try to play this wig as good as possible, considering that this is still like, you know, that, that way. Okay, I'm sorry for my sweat. However, as you can see, here's the final product of the wig. The side part is perfect, the hair is curl. Yes, it could be styled way better. However, I don't have time right now, um, as you can see. So I hope you learn about wigs, Rosie. I really hope you learn. And I cannot wait to see the results of your wigs and see your improvement and see you say, oh, he was Paolo ditched me. He's, he's such a good professor. He's like so good at wigs. He's the perfect guy for wig making and everything like that. So yeah, I'll see you, bye. Okay, so it's definitely not as good as Pablo's but I don't think it turned out bad either. Here's the little side-by-side -side of the hot glue with wefts wig I made versus the weftless wood glue wig I made. There are definitely some marked differences. The wig following Hopeful Creations method is sleeker and fits better to the head. Both the hair and the wig cap follow the line of the head much better. While the partings look about equal, this is only due to inexperience. The biggest difference for me though is with the weftless wig, you see almost none of the wig cap when you part the hair. Hot glue wig on the other hand, well, you know. I definitely agree the wood glue wig is much better and would hold up better too, especially with restyling. Hot tools near hot glue wig caps is a bad idea. But let me know what you think. If you're already subscribed to my channel, thanks so much for subscribing. And if you're new here, I hope you like the content and consider subscribing. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.